Holy smokes, everyone. The Nasdaq is on track to record its worst month in history. And what's happening now with the Nasdaq, with tech stocks, and in the stock market overall is ringing alarm bells, just like what happened in the dot-com bubble. Because what has happened over the past year, we've had SPACs, we've had venture capitalism go through the roof. Anyone doing a fintech startup has had money thrown at them hand over fist. We had the rise of electrical vehicles and profitless companies promising the world and their valuations were at hundreds of billions of dollars without even a product or without even earning any money. And now what we're seeing is a rise of the metaverse and NFTs where people are paying millions of dollars for a picture of a rock and investing their life savings in the latest doggy coin. There is absolutely no way that you can deny that this crazy speculation in the markets hasn't been one of the biggest bubbles we have ever seen. And when you take a step back and look at reality, it's no surprise why the markets are crashing now. But everyone, I've got some new data and some new news to show you how things are looking exactly like what happened in the dot-com bubble. It's almost like deja vu or the matrix where you saw a black cat walk past twice. It is terrifyingly similar. So everybody, let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into it. Look at this. NASDAQ 100's unrelenting decline rings a dot-com bust alarm. Let me put it into perspective how bad this week really was. The NASDAQ 100 just did something it hadn't done since the aftermath of the internet bubble. That's right fall more than 1% in every session of a week. Monday was a holiday, but for investors caught up in the sell-off, it felt like something shifted. And I don't know about you, but remember, I've been warning how quick things can change in the markets. Just two or three weeks ago, it was looking like we're going to the moon, but now it looks like we're going to doom. And just to show you how bad things could possibly get if we do have a repeat of the dot-com bubble, have a look at this. I'll bring up a chart here, everyone. As we can see, the NASDAQ hit around 5,000 in the year 2000. And we can see from peak to drop, off, it fell around 75%. Now, this is not me predicting that it's going to fall 75%. This is not me saying it's going to definitely go down 75%, but it's definitely wise to learn from history to show how bad things potentially could get. And you know how people say, just buy the dip. Don't worry. Stocks always go up in the long term. It will recover after five maybe 10 years? Well, this wasn't the case. Look at this, everyone. The NASDAQ did not recover for another 15 years, but this also doesn't even factor in inflation, so it actually is much more than that. So just because it's recovered after every dip over the past 15 years, this hasn't always been the case, everyone. A full week of big down days hasn't happened since a dot-com bubble burst, first in April 2000 and then in September 2001. But what are some things that caused this sell-off this week? The NASDAQ 100 tumbled 7.5 this week as what started as an aggressive sell-off in speculative corners spread to the rest of the market. Disappointing results from the pandemic darlings like Netflix Inc. accelerated investors' angst as the economy recovers tech growth edge is disappearing. Add that to stretch valuations and there was a room for a pullback. That's exactly right. We've already been seeing many stocks already crash over 50% and mostly these highly speculative profitless stocks, pretty much all of Kathy Wood stocks, I guess you could say. And also what the market is worried about is companies earning are going to go down and their valuations were already so crazy and with the economy reopening it's looking like their future earnings are going to be lower and lower and the market just simply has to price this in and even legendary investor charlie munger has been warning that now is even crazier than the dot-com bust. So the signs have been everywhere, people. It was so obvious. But when there's lots of euphoria in the markets, people get blinded by greed. And listen to this. Down almost 12% in January, the NASDAQ 100 is on course for its worst month since the 2008 global financial crisis. But who or what is behind all this selling? Because it's definitely not retail. They simply don't have the power to bring the markets down this fast. This is who everyone, the last hour of selling and consistent selling each day does seem like institutions are done being patient and are rushing to get out. And I'm definitely seeing that. We're seeing these fake rallies. We're seeing these sucker rallies. They're pulling in retail investors in thinking it's a great time to buy the dip and then bam, they're dumping on them. Whether this is the start of the bottoming process or something worse is hard to tell. In Bank of America Corp's latest survey of global fund managers, net allocation to technology sector has failed to its lowest levels since 2008. So not only are we starting to see similarities to the dot-com bubble of 2000, but we're also seeing similarities of selling pressure to 2008. You know what's going to be the final nail in the coffin and really make this get interesting? Margin calls. Because like I've been showing you on the channel, margin debt is at record highs. And we can see here it is now starting to slowly come down because people are going to start getting margin calls 
or they may be afraid that they'll get margin calls. So they're forced to sell their margin. They don't have a choice and they can't buy the dip. Even our good friend, me, Kevin, that always told us to buy the dip, he's selling everything and he's out. So things are definitely getting serious when even the bulls are turning into bears. But what you're probably wanting to know is, will things get worse and what should we pay attention to to see if there's going to be a flip in the market? Well, two important dates to pay attention for coming up is the Federal Reserve's meeting this week on the 25th and 26th. It's going to be very interesting to see what Jerome Powell says uh, at his press conference. Let's see how hard the media puts pressure on him and let's see if he takes back some of the things he says and tries to speak up the markets or if he stands his ground. Also, the next inflation data is going to come out on February 10th. So we'll see if inflation is going down or if it's staying persistently high. Because if all of a sudden we see the Federal Reserve flip and say they're no longer going to lift interest rates, and if we get inflation data that comes out on February 10th and it's lower than the previous month, we may see a short-term rally. But if Jerome Powell stands his ground and says, no, we're still going to lift interest rates, even though the markets are crashing, and we get inflation data that's showing inflation is consistent, well, this market sell-off is going to continue. And unfortunately, what the Federal Reserve and the government have done is they're running very low on tools. They've used most of their ammo on the recession in 2020. And look at this. Well, I'll bring up a chart here. This is the Federal Reserve's fund rate. And in 2008, they were able to drop interest rates all the way from 5% to zero. But look where we are now. We're already at zero. Also, in 2019, when the stock market started to crash, when they started lifting interest rates, they could drop interest rates by 2%. But again, we're at zero. They can't do this now. Also, look at this, the debt clock. During past recessions, the government has been able to take on more and more debt to fuel the economy, but the debt is at such record levels and with rising interest rates, they're not going to be able to take on much more debt. And with inflation at 40-year highs, what are they going to be able to do to stop this crash coming, everyone? Well, what I think they've got very little they can do. And really what they need to do is just let the free markets do its thing, let the market correct, and rebuild from a more sustainable base. But everyone, what do you think? How bad will this market crash go? Are we near the bottom or is it going to go down further? Now, for all my loyal viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.